Legend of Total War here, and today we're doing another tier list using Tier Maker. Uh, this time covering every single Total War game that's been released so far. So I'm actually going to be rating each of them twice. I'm going to firstly rate them based on how good they were when they first were released and within, say, the first year or so, but also rating them based on how good they are back in 2021. So there are some Total War games that may have been amazing when they first came out, but just due to the time progression and you know, other Total War games coming out that might just have made a Total War game completely outdated, uh, my opinion on a, on a Total War game may have vastly changed since I first played it. But I can still remember what it was like when I, when I first played a particular Total War game. So by doing two tier lists at the same time, you'll get a rough idea about how I felt about it originally and how I feel about it now. Before we get into the tier list, I do need to let you guys know that this video is sponsored by Instant Gaming. They're currently doing a Black Friday sale event, so different games on sale across four different days. So these are the sales that are available on today. There'll be some new ones tomorrow, on Sunday, and on Monday. So if there's a particular game that you've been holding out on waiting for a good price, for example, Age of Empires 4, which only recently came out, uh, do check out the Black Friday sale on Instant Gaming. Link in the description. Big thanks to Instant Gaming for helping to support the channel and making this video possible. Um, I've purchased a lot of keys from Instant Gaming and I've never had any issues, uh, but do make sure you make uh, you check to make sure you're getting the key on the platform that you can use it on, whether it be Epic Games, Steam, or whatever, and uh, make sure you're purchasing the right region. That's really important. Anyway, let's get on to the tier list. So starting with Shogun 2. So in terms of the tabs here, this first tab will be for how they are in when they first were released and the second one will be for what they were like when in 2021 so starting with shogun total war this is the first total war game that ever came out came out in uh year 2000 um i wasn't involved in at all in total war um in that era so my entry into total war was actually medieval total war and i played shogun 2 a couple of years after first playing medieval total war um but my opinions on the release of Shogun Total War was that it was an a rank title. Shogun Total War, or just Total War in general, I suppose, uh, really changed the game in terms of how uh, real-time strategy games were perceived. This was at a time where um, RTSs were um, l largely mission-based, and here we had sort of a... a um, a campaign, a persisting campaign, where the effects of battle would persist onto the campaign and continue on for the entire game. So it was a massive game changer, as well as having, at the time at least, the most number of like entities on the battle at any given time. So Shogun Total War, despite, if you look at it now, it looks a bit ugly. At the time, in 2000, it was absolutely incredible. At least that's my perception of it. However, when we go and play Shogun Total War in 2021, this is not really recommended if you want to have a good time. Because modern operating systems just don't really handle it very well. Um, Steam, it wasn't very well ported onto Steam, so it crashes all the time. And I think the big thing here is that Shogun Total War is made completely outdated by Total War games that came after it, like Shogun 2, which we'll get into in a bit. So if you were around back in the year 2000, Shogun Total War was amazing, but there's really no reason to pick it up in 2021 unless you're just looking for a uh, nostalgia hike and you just want to play something that you played, you know, 20 years ago. Otherwise, you know, a great game. I mean, 21 years have passed since uh, Shogun Total War came out. So still a great Total War game. It's just not aged particularly well. Now we move on to Medieval Total War. Now this was the first Total War game that I ever played. And in my opinion, it's also A-ranked. I thought it, that it was very well received. It didn't really progress the series at all that much or, yeah at all from shogun total war what it did was just took all the mechanics from shogun total war uh and basically just reskinned it uh same mechanics basically if you played shogun total war you'd completely understand how to play medieval total war because it's they're essentially the same game they both use the total war one engine and um the big thing with medieval total war is just, it's just a bigger total war game than shogun total war but apart from that it's functionally exactly the same um, this is what got me into Total War games, and I spent a good number of hours on this game before deciding to purchase the next Total War game, uh, which I'll talk about in a moment. Now, in terms of where Medieval Total War stands in 2021, 
I've got to say it's it's going to be deranked because while it was great when it first came out, back when I was playing it was like 2004, 2005. Even though it came out in 2002, but that was just when I was uh, introduced into the into the um, franchise. Um, Medieval two, uh, sorry, Medieval one doesn't run well on Steam. If there might be like a handful of people that are just like, oh, I have no problems running Medieval on on Steam. That's great. You're very lucky. I had huge amount of problems trying to get Medieval Total War to run. It would constantly crash. Um, there is constant issues with loading uh, with battles, and oftentimes I found that that in 2021 that I would just just auto resolve battles just because I didn't want the game to bloody crash. So it just has massive instability issues. And a big thing with Medieval Total War is that if you're looking for the medieval theme, it is made completely outdated by Total War games that came after it. But for 2002 to 2004, I think Medieval Total War was a great Total War game. Now we move on to Rome Total War. Now this is the game that first made me from liking Total War games to absolutely loving them. So... I probably lost a full GPA, because I was at university when I first um, uh, discovered Rome Total War. I probably lost a full GPA because of Rome Total War, because I would skip classes, because I just would rather play Rome Total War uh, than actually go to school. So, uh, it's, it's lucky that things ended up the way it did, but yeah. Uh, Rome Total War may have actually, could have ruined my bloody life, because... Um, <laughs> I just spent so much time playing it. I remember there was one time I lent uh, my disc uh, to... Because this was before Steam, you know, I had it on a disc. I uh, lent it to a friend, and we didn't see him for a week. For a full week, he just disappeared. And then we saw him a week later, and his eyes were bloodshot, and he all he did was mumble, urban cohort, urban cohort. Because he'd been playing it the entire week. So basically, Rome Total War is, re is responsible for ruining the lives of many, many uh, impressionable young young men, but kind of in a good way, because it was just that good. Nothing like it had come before it. So when it first came out, it was a definite S tier. In many ways, there's never been quite like uh, a game like Rome Total War that absolutely unified the entirety of a of a fan base uh, and, and just made them absolutely love it. Like I would never come across anybody that disliked Rome Total War back in the old days. However, in 2021, Rome Total War does suffer from a lot of issues. I'm going to put it at B tier, okay? So that's not bad, but here are some problems with Rome Total War in 2021. Pathfinding is atrocious on higher unit scales. Now, of course, you could just play on lower unit scales, but other Total War games that have come after it... Um, do much better with the unit scales. The pathfinding is a lot better. This is part of the problem with older games. Uh, in many ways, Total War games keep improving in some areas. Sometimes they go backwards. Um, but the AI and the pathfinding and the pacing of battles in Rome Total War is really clunky. In Even though it, it has got a remaster, and I'm sort of including that in here, the remaster isn't really that good. What the remaster does is just takes the existing Rome Total War game and gives it a fresh cone of paint, but it doesn't address a lot of the core issues like the pathfinding, bad AI. Um, I mean, those are the really crux of the, the main problems for Rome Total War. It's um, It does add a lot more modability to it, but I think that uh, it didn't really bring it up to 2021 20, standards. It just brought it up a couple of years. So I would really like to see them keep working on the remaster. Because I think there's potential there for them to uh, actually bring it up to A or even S tier. But they've got to address the AI and they've got to address the pathfinding in order for me to give it a higher rank. But Rome Total War was still holds a lot, a lot of nostalgia in my heart. But when I play it in 2021, I just feel like there are better Total War games now. Um, which is probably going to get <laughs> kind of a lot of hate in this video. How could you say it's not perfect? It's like, well, you know, it's not. You know, compared to what's come after it, you know, Rome Total War does have some flaws. But, you know, when it first came out, it was outstanding. Anyway, let's talk about Medieval 2 now. So when Medieval 2 first came out, I would have actually said it was A tier. Um, it came, when it was first launched, it came with a bunch of issues. Um, it really didn't run all that well. There were no mods. Um, and many of us that played it were just like, this is just Rome Total War, but in the medieval era. But as the game updated, it definitely, um, 
improved it significantly. And one of the things that made Medieval 2 so great, something that Rome Total War didn't get, was the inclusion of the Third Age Total War mod. Medieval 2 is way more moddable than Rome Total War. And so there was a greater influx of mods, which kept the life of Medieval 2 going. Which is why Medieval 2, despite having a lower initial score than Rome Total War, actually gets a higher score than it today. I'm going to put it at 8 here. If had I done this t uh, tier list uh, a few years back, I probably would have put it at S tier. But Total War is progressing, and Medieval 2 is starting to feel its age. But for... A Total War game that's been out for 15, 16 years, Medieval 2 has aged really well. It runs really well on modern operating systems. I don't get that many crashes unless you, you know, really put in some some serious mods. But that's the same thing with um, every Total War game, really. Um, the campaign runs well. The soundtrack is great. Um, the the pathfinding is so much better than Rome Total War. Um, some of the issues that I think Medieval 2 suffers from is clunky clunky um, unit controls, um, camera controls, really, really bad AI. Uh, a lot of that is attributed to the fact that the AI actually doesn't get any combat modifiers on harder battle difficulties, so they they really do fall over on their own sword a lot. Um, the AI is just, just not that, not that uh, tough. Um, but in terms of overall funness, <sighs> Uh, there's a lot to do in a Medieval Total War campaign, even if, uh, sorry, Medieval 2, uh, even if you're not playing with any mods. And that being said, if you do want to extend your gameplay of Medieval 2, there are so many mods to choose from, and it's still being worked on. Uh, despite the fact that this is a 15-year-old Total War game, it's actually one of the most played Total War games on Steam. Okay, so let's now move on to Empire Total War. Okay, so we've been fairly positive so far, and here comes Empire Total War. Empire Total War... You know, the, the introduction of the Warscape engine. Rome, sorry, Shogun 1, Medieval 1, that was a Total War 1 engine. Rome 1, Medieval 2 was the Total War 2 engine. Empire Total War brings in the, the Warscape engine. And everybody loves the Warscape engine. Not! Okay, Empire Total War is garbage. This game r nearly ruined Total War for me. Uh, when this game first came out, I, I pre-ordered it. I played it on day one. And I played one campaign. I uninstalled it, and I didn't touch Total War for about four years. I completely missed the launch of Napoleon and almost missed the launch of Shogun 2 because Empire Total War left such a bad taste in my mouth that I was like, all right, I'm just going to stick to the games that I love because this franchise is dead to me. Uh, Empire Total War is, well, on launch, was such a buggy mess. Most people that like Empire Total War like it for the time period. But if you play Empire Total War today, it doesn't run well. Uh, it's super slow paced games. Uh, maybe multiplayer is okay, but the, the campaign is just an absolute bloody mess. Diplomacy is useless. The economy system is basic. Everything was made basic, but really, really bad. There was just so many issues with Empire Total War. And the thing is, in 2021, nothing was really addressed. So it goes straight into the fucking bin there. Empire Total War is absolute rubbish. Do not recommend it at all. Okay, moving on to uh, Napoleon Total War. Now... I wasn't around for the launch of Napoleon Total War, but in many ways, Napoleon did fix a lot of the issues uh, with Empire Total War. One of the saving graces of Empire Total War, though, was naval battles. Now, I think in Empire Total War, naval battles do actually function quite well, but it is the only thing that you can really lean on with Empire Total War. It's its only crutch, and it's not enough. Uh, but given that there are so few Total War games that actually have decent naval battles, if you're attracted to naval battles, then you might actually like Empire Total War. The problem is, though, you can't win the campaign just relying on naval battles in sec and in fact uh, very few of your battles will be naval battles unless you are really not looking to invade other countries and just looking to focus just on trade which you can do um, but the way the win to win is to by invading with your land armies and that is just Oh, so painful. Anyway, Napoleon Total War um, did fix a lot of the issues of Empire... Well, I should say fixed some of the issues of Empire Total War, but was much better received. I don't think it had anywhere near the reception of these uh, Total War games, so I'm going to put it at B tier when it was first um, uh, launched. Unfortunately, I just wasn't really there for it. 
Um, but when I played it years later, um, it was it was alright. I definitely have a a better feeling about Napoleon Total War, and I did like the story based um, narrative throughout the various different uh, sort of mini campaigns, and then the grand campaign with Napoleon. Um, it's a bit of a smaller Total War game than the ones that came before it, but it was much more polished, and that was the big thing that Empire of Total War didn't have. It was a big campaign map. I really do like the fact that it was so big that you could essentially circumnavigate the entire world uh, with your ships, um, but it just doesn't make up for the fact that it just wasn't really implemented very well. Now, in, in 2021, I feel like uh, Napoleon Total War has aged pretty well. I think it runs fairly well. It still suffers from a few bugs, that legacy from Empire Total War. But considering the foundation it was built on, Napoleon Total War is a good Total War game that's got a decent multiplayer scene, decent number of concurrent players, uh, and it runs. It seems to run pretty well. It's got a good soundtrack. I, th I think if you're looking to play a, a gunpowder-based Total War game, Napoleon Total War is uh, one that you can reliably go to. So, you know, not one of my favorites, uh, but I, I enjoy it about the same amount as I play um, Rome Total War these days. So yeah, not too bad. All right, now we move on to Shogun 2. So I nearly did miss the release of Shogun 2 because of, of Empire Total War, but I decided to give uh, Total War another shot with Shogun 2. So just to give you an idea of like the order that I purchased these Total War games in, it went Medieval Total War, Rome Total War, Medieval 2, uh, Shogun Total War, Empire Total War, Shogun 2, Napoleon Total War. So I didn't, I didn't purchase these games in order. Now Shogun 2, I believe when it first launched, got a pretty good uh, release. So it was solid, it had a few issues, um, you know, I was talking to a few people within, you know, my, my friendship groups at the time, and they liked Shogun 2, but it was nothing to the same degree of Rome Total War. People weren't fanatical about it. I played a campaign of Shogun 2 and I enjoyed it. I thought it was all right. Um, and then I, maybe I played two campaigns and then I, I pretty much shelved it for a few years. I, I liked Shogun 2, but I didn't love it. And I think for me, Shogun 2 relies very heavily on the battles being awesome. And that's that it definitely does that really well. But the campaign side of things with Shogun 2 is extremely bare bones. Now, when you've got mechanics like in Medieval 2 with like Crusade mechanics and various different races and like various different cultures, I should say, I'm too, too used to Warhammer 2 lingo now. Um, there is a lot more like diversity within the ways that you can play. Whereas Shogun 2, where every faction, while they, they have minor differences, these differences are stat bonuses or maybe one unit that other units can't, other factions can't recruit. But functionally, every um, Shogun 2 faction can play more or less the same. And so there's not a lot of replay value. And I feel like, you know, for the best Total War games, you've got to get that replay value. Like, for example, with Medieval 2, the, uh, the English... Uh, play very differently to the Turks, and the Turks play very differently to the Spanish, and so on and so forth. Whereas, you know, um, the Date don't play all that much different from the Uesugi, you know, apart from like really, really high level stuff where you're like going really, really, really specific, uh, but there's there's not a whole bunch of difference. And, you know, the economy system's pretty basic. Um, but yeah, the battles are amazing. Probably the most polished Total War game to date has, has the least amount of bugs and also has the best multiplayer mode, Avatar Conquest. I have not enjoyed Total War multiplayer ever, with a bare exception for a small amount of time playing Avatar Conquest and surprisingly a Total War Attila multiplayer was actually quite enjoyable. Uh, but yeah, that is one big saving grace for Shogun 2 there. Now, in 2021... Where does Shogun 2 lie? I'm going to put it at A tier. It gets a similar number of players as Medieval 2, slightly less, but people that do play it absolutely love it, and there's, you know, it's it's aged really well. It still runs really well. There's no issues with it. It's, uh, it's a good Total War game. I don't really feel like it belongs in the S tier, just because um, I, I feel like it's one of those games that some people, a small number of people, absolutely love, and other people go, eh, I can see it's good, but I'm going to play another Total War game. It's just not the kind of thing that everybody universally was like, this is the greatest thing ever. It was just a, like a, a relatively smaller number of people are like, this is this is amazing. Um, but it's still a great Total War game. Like, A rank is not bad at all. I'm putting it at the same rank as my, my, my old favorite Total War game. Okay, now we go to Shogun 2 Fall of Samurai. So this one here is an expansion 
on Shogun 2, but since they made it into a saga title, I thought I'd separate it. Um, so it is it, it does play pretty similar, but it's it's kind of like if you take Shogun 2 and Empire Total War and take away all of the garbage from Empire Total War, you, you get Fall of Samurai. Because you've got good naval battles in the 19th century. You've got de- much better campaign mechanics than Shogun 2. Uh, as in the original, I'm actually going to put Full Samurai as S tier. Um, it's really bloody good. Um, I haven't personally put in a lot of time uh, with Full Samurai, but I do enjoy Full Samurai more than um, than the base game. Uh, and I don't particularly like Gunpowder Warfare, but they did a very good job of it. It's very satisfying combat. Uh, campaign's a little bit more in-depth than the original, and the Realm Divide mechanic isn't quite as garbage as as the as the original. Um, the, the Realm Divide in Shogun 2 is, is a bit better. Uh, still not perfect, but it is a lot better. Now, in 2021, I would say that Shogun 2 Fall of Samurai also belongs in A tier. It's it's really good. I, I think it that's where it belongs. Um, pretty, I mean, it's not that old, so it's, there's not that much, uh, of a degradation in terms of, like, the perform, like, performance, it, it's exactly the same as where it was when it was first released, it still, it still works. Alright, now we move on to, um, Rome 2. Rome 2 is the greatest Rome total, no, I'm just kidding. When it was first relaunched, Rome 2 was rubbish. Now, the funny thing here was this, is that I was a big apologist for Rome 2 when it first came out. But there's a number of reasons of wh- why that why it was like that, um, which I'm not going to go into. But Rome 2 was... The f- was it may have been even worse than Empire Total Wars launched. Like, I wasn't part of the YouTube or, or, or Total War Center community back when in Empire Total War, but I was for Rome 2. Holy moly, was that bad. Everybody was hating on Rome Total War. I'm uh, sorry, Rome 2. And, yeah, it was... It had... It's probably the worst launch out of any Total War game. And the thing is, it relied so heavily on its predecessor, Rome Total War here. And... And um, because Rome Total War was so well received, but Rome 2 basically dumped on its entire legacy because the two play almost nothing alike. Uh, the only thing that they share is the fact that you build armies and that it's set in the Roman era. The the ga- actual gameplay of the two, nothing alike. I mean, th- sure, there's more factions in Rome 2, but it's very much cookie cutter. They're, they're just cut and paste copies of one another. Um, and the, the map is bigger. But Rome 2 is not as moddable as the uh, the Total War 2 engine stuff. So, yeah, in terms of its launch back in 2013, yeah, it definitely gets a D-rank launch for that. That was really bad. Now, where does Rome 2 stand today? This is one of the rare examples where a game launched really bad, but is better now. I'm going to put Rome 2 as B-ranked, because... It, I borderline C. I personally don't like Rome 2. I think it's got a lot of issues, but Rome 2 does still have a a decent number of players. I think it, uh, you know, excluding Total War Warhammer, um, I think Three Kingdoms has the most concurrence, then Rome 2, then Medieval 2, then Shogun 2, in terms of people still playing it. And Rome 2 does have a really good mod that keeps people playing it, Divide Ed Impera. There is a lot of redeeming qualities to Rome 2 now. A lot of the issues that Rome 2 launched with was fixed, especially performance issues. It does seem to run a lot better now. Um, the AI is not completely brain dead, although I think a large, large part of that is just upping its aggression and giving it loads of cheats. The politics system is utter rubbish. The building system is utter rubbish. Um, the way that you build armies was better back in Rome Total War. Um, but the battles are a little bit more enjoyable, I suppose, than what they used to be. Uh, they're definitely melee infantry f- uh, slogs, um, and if you like that, Rome to- is probably the Total War game for you, if you, if you like the Roman era, which is actually my favorite historical era to, to come back to, which is one of the reasons why Rome 2 is such a disappointment for me, because Rome 1 was so good, and um, Rome 2 just, just, just didn't really hit those notes. Now, why is Rome Total War the original in B, and Rome 2 also in B. Well, Rome 2 runs actually better than Rome 1, and at least doesn't have the huge pathfinding issues. There are good things about Rome Total War that aren't in Rome 2, and there are good things in Rome 2 that aren't in Rome 1. If you can combine the best of Rome 2 and the best of Rome 1, you'd probably have an S-tier game. But the, the problem is, is that Creative Assembly just did not build on the legacy of the original. They tried to make an entirely new game, and they fucked up so much of it. And that's why they, they didn't... Uh, 
So it, it didn't get any higher than that. All right, moving on to Attila. Attila's launch was way better than Rome 2, but it wasn't amazing. Um, I'd say it probably ended up in about C tier in terms of its launch. Um, I don't think uh, anywhere near as many people bought uh, Total War Attila as they did Rome 2. Because people, uh, Rome 2 just left a sour taste in its mouth. When I first played a Total War Attila, I was not a big fan of it as well. I, I played a little bit before I really started to see some major issues with, uh, with Total War Attila. Um, but it's, it wasn't as bad as these two. Now, in 2021, though, Total War Attila, I think, is still a B tier, right? Um, I think Total War Attila might actually be a little bit better than Rome 2. Um, there are issues with it. So, I think Rome 2's campaign mechanics are better than Attila. But Attila, in, in my opinion, has actually the best battle mechanics, at least for me, um, out of any historical Total War game. I enjoy the battles in Total War Attila more than Shogun 2. Uh, they're not necessarily balanced, there's some overpowered crap in there, but tactics and maneuvers and sniping enemy general was really important. It's not simply a case of just recruit one unit type and just win when you go into a battle. Um, tactics matter. You could have an inferior army to the enemy, uh, pull off some good maneuvers, kill the enemy general, and rout the enemy. There were there were times where you could win against all odds, or you could completely screw up if your, your general got killed. So there were a lot of really cool battle mechanics with Total War Attila, but with the actual campaign mechanics, my problem with it is that they have... Uh, it's really the only Total War game that, you, that tricks the player into traps. Like, there's a lot of traps in Total War Attila where... Capturing more settlements because of the way that corruption works um, is actually a trap where you'll actually make less money with more settlements. There's technologies, especially for the Roman factions, where if you research certain technologies, it'll actually send your faction backwards. So you actually want to avoid those technologies until later on in the campaign, or else it'll just totally stifle your economy. Um, there's upgrades that are downgrades, like you actually upgrade a unit, and for the stat boost that you get, you actually end up having to pay way more on upkeep. It absolutely m makes somewhat no sense at all. So it's horribly balanced for campaign. But battle stuff is very satisfying, so that's why I'm going to put it at B tier. If they could have got in and fixed the campaign stuff, which they kind of did with Age of Charlemagne, Age of Charlemagne's campaign's pretty good, I might have put it at A tier, but Total War Tiller really left a bad taste in my mouth on the campaign. Um, also, the AI cheats in the campaign, so ridiculous to see when the player uh, takes one step out into the snow and loses half their army. Meanwhile, the Sassanids are just frolicking in the snow, taking absolutely no attrition. Just just utterly ridiculous crap like that. The AI is brain dead. Just crossing across the entire map just to sack one of your settlements and then die as a faction. Um, it was It's designed to be a very frustrating campaign experience, and I personally don't enjoy that. Some people do. I don't. Okay, now we move on to Total War Warhammer. Alright, Total War Warhammer's launch was... Oh, I think it was pretty good. I think it launched reasonably well. I'm inclined to leave it at B or A tier. I think I'm going to put the launch of it at B tier, because I, I was pretty heavily involved in the in the launch of Total War Warhammer. Um, it was pretty bare bones. Like, when you look back at Warhammer when it first came out, it's so bare bones compared to just Total War Warhammer where it actually ended up. Um, order resolve is a big problem where you just recruit uh, loads and loads of garbage uh, crap stacks and then just order resolve your way through the campaign the ai was um pretty bad uh, it, it was a uh, it was reasonably bland uh, at least compared to what it's like today but it introduced a lot of mechanics new to total war like flying units single entities magic and this was really the building block for better things to come. So Total War Warhammer definitely was enjoyable when it first came out, but I really think it was a bit of a B-tier launch. So that's what it was like when it first came out. Now, where it's at right now, I would say that Total War Warhammer is actually D-tier. Now, that is simply because of what came after it. Now, I'm not saying... You know what, I probably should put it at C-tier. I'm not saying that you shouldn't purchase Total War Warhammer. Okay, Total War Warhammer is is a very complicated situation with this because if you if you just own Total War Warhammer, I would say it's not a good Total War game. It is is very badly outdated. I actually played it not that long ago, just on its own, um, and it's it is not aging very well at all. Um, but you kind of want to get it so that you can get the Mortal Empires experience for Total War Warhammer 2 and probably for Total War Warhammer 3. So it's a bit of a weird thing going on with Warhammer 2, where, sorry, Warhammer 1, where 
the base game by itself, I don't really recommend unless you own Warhammer 2. So now let's talk about Warhammer 2. Now the launch of Warhammer 2, I'm going to put at A tier. It was very well received at launch. Um, much better than Warhammer 1. There was a lot of issues that were resolved with Warhammer 2, but the Vortex campaign uh, just wasn't good. And a lot of people criticized it, including myself. And, um, you know, it was a, it was definitely a step up from Total War Warhammer, because there's only like one year between the two as well. And, uh, yeah, it, it had a lot of room to grow. And luckily, Total War Warhammer totally did grow, and it gets an S tier now. In my opinion, Total War Warhammer 2 is the best Total War game that's ever, ever come out in its current state. And that is with the inclusion of Total War Warhammer 1. So you kind of need these two together in order to get the full experience. But even if you play the Vortex campaign without Total War Warhammer 1 now, it is still a lot better um, with a lot of the DLC because it just adds so much to the game. So yeah, that's where I'd put uh, Total War Warhammer 2. If you look at things in terms of Steam stats, it's got some of the, the best reviews. Um, I mean, Medieval 2 is all... And these ones here actually also have really similar reviews. Um, but it has by far the most concurrent players and the most amount of playtime on average with uh, people that play Warhammer 2. So I'm going to leave that at S tier and I stand by that one. Okay, let's move on to... I mean, you probably would have guessed I would have put that there. I mean, that's basically all I cover these days. Okay, Thrones of Britannia. I'm going to put Thrones of Britannia's launch at D... Or it definitely wasn't anywhere near as bad as these two. I'm going to put it C tier. But the Thrones of Britannia launch, I think, was worse than Total War Attila. Maybe I should put Attila here. Yeah, I think I should put Total War Attila there. Because there is a big distinction between these two. Um, when they were first launched. Because, yeah, Thrones of Britannia's launch was not good. Um, but, yeah, nowhere, nowhere as bad as this. Uh, the main thing with Thrones of Britannia is that it's just a bare bones Total War game. It just um, it just doesn't have any any redeeming qualities. Um, it like it came after Total War Warhammer Two, but suffers from problems that Warhammer Two resolved, such as order resolve spamming. The order resolve is broken in Attila, Britannia, Rome Two, Shogun Two, and not in Napoleon. Yeah, yeah, I think it really originated... The, the breaking of the Order Resolve originates from Shogun 2, but it's not that bad in it, and then gets really bad in Rome 2, Attila, and Throne to Britannia. Oh, yeah, and Warhammer 1. It was really bad in Warhammer 1, the Order Resolving. And uh, Medieval 2... Sorry, Medieval 2. Um, Warhammer 2 fixed that. That was one of my biggest problems with Thrones of Britannia. Also, the dumbing down of the campaign, the removal of features, and what it did was, instead of giving active features, ones that actually required gameplay, it gave passive features, like events that would occur, dilemmas, you know, yeah, it, it turned it into kind of a paradox game, where like loads and loads of pop-ups would show up, but they were more or less meaningless results, like, this person gains one loyalty, or it just, it just was, wasn't real gameplay, a lot of the stuff, and you just move your exact same armies around, doing the exact same thing, the AI was brain dead, um, couldn't handle the mechanics very well based on it. It's just overall very poor designed. Just it just basically was half a game, and it probably could have been good in the long run if it was further developed. But it was basically uh, dead on arrival and abandoned shortly after, and that's why Thrones of Britannia is also going into the D tier. This is not a, a Total War game that I would recommend playing in 2021. Um, it just it was abandoned by the developers and. Uh, they kind of just pretend that it doesn't exist, and a lot of people do just pretend it doesn't exist. It's just not very good. It's not. It's not particularly buggy. It's just compared to what you know for a game that came out in two thousand and eighteen, it wasn't good enough. If it had come out in twenty twelve, it would have been great. Its launch would have been better than Rome two, but you know this came out after Warhammer two. It just wasn't acceptable for for a Total War game that had made strides in many ways to just go backwards by so much. Um, it just wasn't good enough. Okay, now we move on to Three Kingdoms. Three Kingdoms, I think, had one of the best launches of a Total War game that I've ever seen. It was almost un universally praised. It was... It, I played it, and I was looking for things to, to hate on it. Um, I didn't love it at launch, but it was really well-beloved. So I'm going to put uh, Thrones of uh, sorry Three Kingdoms as an S tier when it first came out. Now, of course, that wasn't that long ago. That was only 2019. 
Now, here's the thing. I haven't played that much Three Kingdoms since it first came out. And from what I've read of the community, is that Three Kingdoms is actually in a pretty bad state at the moment. And it's basically abandoned by the developers. So I'd actually put Three Kingdoms in its current state at B tier. Um, because apparently there were a lot of issues introduced, uh, with the confusing shit with all the different timelines, the fact that you don't actually have a Three Kingdoms start date, um, I think it had a lot of potential that just was completely fucked up with a DLC cycle that just didn't hit the market, um, anywhere near as well as it should have. Maybe they had planned a lot more, and maybe that stuff that was coming later would have been really amazing, but they, they quit before they got to that point. So I think Three Kingdoms as a 2021 Total War game uh, ends up in B tier. Still, still a good Total War game. Um, you know, borderline even A tier. Oh, would I put it in A tier? Yeah, you know what? I think I'd, I'd even put it in a, at, at A tier there. It is a good Total War game, and it is the most played historical Total War game on Steam. Um, even though I don't personally play it that much, uh, yeah, I'll put it under A tier. And it definitely it definitely belongs above these ones here, so yeah, I'm going to put it A tier. And then we have Troy. This is a bit of a weird one, because it was an Epic exclusive, so we have to... It has two launches, Troy. It launched um, in 2020 on Epic, and then 2021 on Steam. And um, on, on Epic, its launch was okay. I think it was like a, an A tier launch. Yeah, it was, it was pretty well received. It was way better than Thrones of Britannia. Way, way, way better. And of course, it was free for those of you who downloaded it um, yeah, before it came out, essentially. Get it on the first 24 hours. Uh, but where is Troy at today? I'd actually put Troy as a C tier Total War game. Um, a lot of the, like, when a, when a Total War game is launched, you expect that there's going to be issues with it. And Creative Assembly has a certain amount of time to fix those issues before the game is forgotten about. That's what, that's what the problem with these, to, well, not those two there, those, they're just old, right? But these two here, the problem with the, them is that, you know, it's fine if you have a bad launch, but you got to fix it. That's why Rome Total War got up here, okay? It, it more or less got fixed. It didn't, didn't manage to get up here, but they put in a lot of effort and they salvaged it. Troy has been out for a year now, and a lot of the issues that first were first addressed with with the initial launch of, of Troy have not been addressed at all. And if they don't start addressing this stuff soon, then it's going to end up in D tier because there's some problems with Troy. The, there is no collision in Troy. You can just run units right through each other. Uh, chariots are meta by a long shot. Uh, the AI cheats on the battlefield to a really unsatisfying degree. Uh, the barter system is great. Uh, the, the actual campaign mechanics and diplomacy on Troy is really good, but battles suck on Troy. I kind of wish that the order resolve spamming of, like, Total War Warhammer was in Troy, because I don't want to fight any battles in Troy. In fact, I'd play Troy more if I didn't have to play the fucking battles, because they're so... I just don't enjoy them. I don't enjoy the sieges, I don't enjoy the field battles, I don't like the single entities. Um, I don't... I just don't like the way it plays at all. Unenjoyable, un unsatisfying combat. Uh, but the campaign side of things was great. Uh, but yeah, it's, uh, Creative Assembly kind of, if they do want to keep focusing on Troy, they need to address the way that combat works in Troy, because it's very unsatisfying. If they do that, Troy could probably end up in A tier, but um, I don't think it's got enough potential to hit S tier uh, just yet. Um, Three Kingdoms could have hit S tier um, if it had sort of, if it had kept going along the lines that... Um, when it was when it first started, but they sort of lapsed with that uh, a significant amount. Anyway, so that's my tier list there for both. Okay, so this one here is what they were ranked when it first came out. So those were basically the launches and the subsequent year of it, of the first year of it coming out. And this one here is what I rank every Total War game today with um, Total War Warhammer 2 being the best, the, in my opinion, the, the one that people enjoy the most. Um, but if you're not interested in Warhammer, totally understandable, it's not for everybody. Um, for a historical Total War game, I would recommend Medieval 2, Shogun 2, uh, Fall of Samurai, and Three Kingdoms over the rest of them. Um, these ones here, uh, they all suffer from various different issues, and anything below um, B tier, I probably would skip 
unless you're really unless you've like overplayed everything and you just like just want to play a total war game that you've never played before but every single total war game does have its redeeming qualities from empire total war to warhammer 2 there are issues in warhammer 2 and there's redeeming qualities in empire total war no total war game is perfect and no total war game is completely 100 percent beyond redemption and it just comes down to your personal preferences what you want out of a total war game i think you've gotten a bit of a picture of what i like out of total war games you know i like to have really in-depth campaign mechanics and get really involved into the into the side of things where the stuff that I do on the battlefield really impacts the campaign and the stuff I do in the campaign really impacts the battlefield. And that, I think Warhammer 2 does that almost perfectly. Yeah, there's a ton of cheese. Yeah, there's a ton of exploits. But the synergy between campaign and, and battle is best in these five Total War games here. Anyway, that's the end of this one here, guys. Um, if you've... If you're keen on uh, buying a Total War game, don't forget to check out a uh, uh, check out Insta Gaming link in the description. Appreciate you guys. Leave your comments in be down below on what you think of this tier list and whether you agree and disagree on certain points. I appreciate you guys, and I'll see you next time, fuckers. Bye.